and now if we play oh it's playing back in real time actually uh, let's move the camera to the right so we're finally testing fusion today hi i'm alex jordan from learn color grading and film simplified.com so we're finally doing the fusion tap test and resolve on a mac with the m1 chip please note that all the tests i ran for the past couple of days including this one are done with this particular model of mac mini the one to the left so this is the cheapest one for 699 dollars so this is the one that comes with a 256 ssd and an 8 gigabyte of unified memory and again why am i testing a cheaper device is to see if content creators on a budget can buy the cheapest mac with the m1 chip that was introduced and download resolve for free of course we're discussing the particular version of resolve that is, was designed to work with these macs and get our resolve course for free on filmsimplified.com so they can start editing 4k files without needing to spend a lot of money in the process before we start just a quick reminder that our black friday deal will go live next week if you'd like to learn more i created a video about our black friday deal you can find the link below now testing fusion is not as simple as testing um, the edit tab for example or the color tab because fusion compositions can be built up infinitely can be infinitely large and can be extremely small so what workload to test here i will be performing most of the tasks that a starting filmmaker would be performing in fusion now before we start it's important to note that the software is in beta so please do not use this version of resolve uh, currently um, if you're working with clients it's still in beta and you should not do that because i faced um, two issues one of the issues i discussed before which is when i import a PNG it doesn't import correctly this of course will be fixed in an update uh, of resolve uh, and uh, also the system uh, crashed once when I was using it until today the system never crashed however uh, today when I was testing uh, fusion I had one crash so uh, that's worth noting here quick note uh, I just remember today that I did not switch the Mac so for the past couple of days I've been editing all these videos actually on the Mac uh, you know with m1 chip and i did not go back into editing on my main machine i just noticed today that i've been editing off the mac uh, with the m1 chip uh, all these videos were edited uh, with that of course these are not very intensive videos but i totally forgot that i was working on a mac mini before we start let's go to davinci resolve preferences and here if we go to the memory and gpu section note that we have these settings here i did not change these settings i left everything to the default settings which limits fusion memory cache to two gigabytes and then i'll open the project settings if you scroll down i disabled automatically cache fusion effects in user mode because i don't don't want caching to um, affect the results uh, of the test so there is no caching uh, happening at all resolve will try to play a fusion effects in real time so let's first start by dragging a fusion composition to the timeline so here we have a fusion composition i'll switch to fusion and this is the fusion page let's bring this here so let's start with a very simple thing to see if it works in fusion on the 8 gigabyte model of the m1 mac so so i'll simply open effects library go to edit templates titles so let's start adding titles i'll add a background here connected to media out and let's start for example by adding a call out connecting it to the background here through a merge node uh, i'll drag the media out also to the left uh, viewer and disable controls so that we can see it without the controls here and let's start playing and it plays back in real time no problem however this is expected this is a very easy effect to, to play on any system actually so let's delete this call out add center reveal to test it and connect it to merge and this is center reveal let's play and it's playing back in real time one more time great so we established that titles uh, at least simple titles play back in real time so uh, fade on another title let's play and the title seems to be playing back in real time great so this is one title let's add two titles for example so again i'll add a drop in lower third connected to merge here and i'll add for example a flip over title connected again through another merge node and let's play and they're playing back in real time let's take a look at the playback one more time great so everything seems to be working fine so far however let's add another title for fun for example let's get an outline offset drag it to merge here and now we have three titles let's just move this one change its position so maybe place it here and i'll play and 
they seem to be working fine actually wow uh yeah great the titles are working fine so we have three title presets working at the same time without any issues uh there was a small uh, uh you know hiccup at the beginning but i'm not sure if that's uh, a big deal so now let's try adding a title on top of a clip so for example i'll delete uh, i guess this is the one i want yeah, no no this is the one i want to keep so let's delete and this one so now we have one title let's make the background transparent so we can add it on top of any piece of footage and i'll switch here bring the title up again i'm not trying to explain anything here i'm assuming that you're familiar with fusion and for example let's add this clip here and play and the title is playing back in real time take a look at the playback of the clip and the title again play and they're playing back without any problem great so now we established that titles play back in real time at least most titles i'm sure that some titles are more taxing on the system than other titles but for these basic titles that i tried everything seems to be working fine and frankly that is really impressive for an 8 gigabyte machine because remember fusion compositions can get infinitely large it's not like there is a limit on how large a fusion composition can get you can just keep on throwing titles and animations and 3d objects and 2d objects so what we're doing today here is we're testing the most popular scenarios for starting filmmakers so someone who just started who can only afford like seven hundred dollars to buy this machine would this work for fusion for his needs and so we're testing the scenarios that usually starting filmmakers perform the most so let's switch back to fusion and maybe now let's try generators so i'll come to generators here and let's try a texture background generator drag it here and it works fine let's use a noise gradient for example now and play and all these effects are expected to play well on a lower end machine these generators um, most of them at least are not taxing on the system so let's delete everything and now let's try keying so for example i switch to media pool here and look for the clip with the green screen and i'll add a keyer to the clip so uh, key and uh, let's uh, try delta keyer okay let's drag the keyer here and i'll simply select the green color and this is the key so let's refine the key really fast i'll switch from final result to matte and the matte isn't exactly uh white you see we have some darker areas uh, so let's just come to matte refinement here and make this part here and just maybe increase threshold from this size and much better this is a much better matte now let's take a look at the final result okay great so now we just established that keying works let's play and the clip is playing back in real time without any problems so what we're going to be doing here again i'm going to be compositing this on top of another piece of footage so let's switch back to the uh edit page and let's add this on top of another piece of footage and notice that everything is playing back in real time so we have the girl in the front and the uh, scene whatever the scene is in the background great let's save now i'll switch back to fusion and try to clone this uh this girl so i'll simply look for duplicate and i'll add the duplicate node here and let's create multiple copies and move them to the right yeah great so now we just cloned this girl multiple times let's switch back to the edit page and let's try to play and the playback is not happening in real time but this is to be expected with uh you know with all the keys because everything is being duplicated now but i just wanted you to see how you can push the system a bit However, if we switch back to uh, Fusion and remove the uh, duplicate node, come back here and play, everything now plays back in real time without any problem. Let's switch back to Fusion, delete everything, and now I'm just going to add a clip here. And now let's try adding film grain, which is one of the intensive uh, effects. Usually it's not easy to play back by any system, so let's see if we run into any trouble here. So I'll just uh, look for grain so this is film grain and let's play and again as expected the playback is not happening in real time just because this is film grain usually this is hard to play on any system that is four or five times the price of this one but i just wanted to show you what works and what doesn't then let's uh, track a scene so for example let's bring this here connect it to media out so let's track the camera i'll here and just look for a tracker 
and I'll select camera tracker, add, and this is our camera tracker. Let's start tracking now, so auto track, and tracking is happening in real time actually. So now we have our tracking ready, these are the tracking points. I'm not going to perfect the tracking, this is just to prove a point. I'll come here, solve, and we just solve the tracking, and I'm going to export export and we just exported everything let's just move the remove the camera tracker now and i'll delete this and connect the camera tracker to media out great so now we have a camera tracked with a merge 3d again i'm not explaining how these things work we're just saying what can you do with the mac with the m1 chip so i'll move merge 3d here and we have this merge 3d and let's for example add a 3d object so while selecting merge i'll click here and we just added a shape 3d let's uh, change the shape of this shape for example to a uh, cylinder let's say and now notice that if we look at the media out here the playback is not happening in real time but the cylinder is currently moving with the camera let's make the cylinder a bit smaller so that we can see it in a better way in the image so i'll just click here change the scale better and notice that now it's tracked with the scene however we managed to perform the tracking in a very easy way and but playback of course will not happen in real time please keep realistic expectations with the system uh, in fusion because these effects usually do not play smoothly on most systems anyway okay so now we uh, perform 3d camera tracking now let's try 2d tracking so i'll drag uh, this clip here drag it uh, to the viewer and uh, let's add a tracker let's move the tracking point to this uh, object here it's easier to track and let's start tracking forward great i'll place the play uh, head back at this point and let's track backward and we're tracking the object in almost real time great notice that this is hd footage but tracking works obviously in real time on the system with uh, hd footage and now let's add uh, some text so i'll just drag text here add it to the tracker and let's just change the text to test great so now we have test text and uh, i'll just select the tracker here go to operations and switch to match move great i'll simply change the position of the text so maybe just add it here and now if we play oh it's playing back in real time actually so great so we just tracked uh, uh a 2d object added text and this is like uh, for when you want to track a call out to uh, an object in a film so uh, yeah we're doing tracking in real time please keep in mind that this particular clip is an hd which means that if you uh, try to do this with 4k i'm sure it's going to be slower it's not going to be able to play back in real time please keep that in mind so let's delete this and now let's try a very simple 3d scene to see if 3d works with this mac well that's pretty simple i'll add um, a 3d shape here let's change it to cube great and let's add some 3d text so this is text here again i'll just call this test and of course the test the text now is still in 2d so we need to extrude it so i'll just come to extrusion here extrusion depth and actually to make this a bit uh, more interesting i'll just right click go to 3d object and select lighting and here also 3d object select lighting so now we can see uh, things in a better way you know with a base with some basic lighting so that we can distinguish the shapes great so now we have this test text let's merge it on top of the 3d shape or the shape 3d so, so i'll just connect them both and now I have a merge 3d that merges both objects let's select the text make it larger uh, maybe and move it to the back so now we have this ba very basic uh, 3d scene i don't think this scene is taxing at all on any system but i just wanted to show you that it works because the thing with 3d scenes you can just build them up infinitely you know so there's no limit on how big a scene can get so yeah let's for example animate something so i'll just come to the 3d shape here and I'll open transform for example let's move it from this side so we have the object here so at this point uh, this is the position and for example at this point let's change the position to this position here so now we're seeing you can see the animation happening in real time at least here in the viewer so now let's add a 3d camera so merge 3d I'll add a 3d camera and now let's change the position of the camera let's for example animate the camera also so if 
for example, I'll just come to the shape 3D and at this point, if I look at the camera, I want it to be at this position, for example, maybe here. I want it to move with it. So let's come to transform and save the position of the camera at this point. And then when we come to this point here, let's select the camera back. Uh, let's move the camera to the right. Great, so we change the position of the camera. Now we need to uh, see the scene through the camera. So I'll simply add a render uh, 3D node and connect it to media out. It's not very clear. Maybe we just need to move the camera back a bit. So let's change the position of the camera between both keyframes. So in this keyframe, I will move the camera to the back a lot. And in this keyframe next to it, let's also move the camera back a lot. Let's take a look at media out. And you can see that the animation is happening in real time. Of course, this is a basic animation, but you get the point. And then uh, let's add light. So I'll simply drag a spotlight here. Make sure to go to render 3D, of course, and enable uh, lighting. So now let's go to merge 3D and change the position of the spotlight. Let's uh, show controls here and move the spotlight to this position, for example. Maybe move it up a bit. And now if we take a look at the scene to the right, yeah, you can see the lighting. Now let's switch to the edit tab play and uh, at least for this very basic scene everything is playing back in real time so let's switch back to fusion so as you can see fusion works smooth frankly uh, and the stuff that usually needs to be rendered uh, or cached on a, like a three or four thousand dollar system still needs to be rendered or cached here so when it comes to fusion it simply plays as well as a device that costs two to three thousand dollars um, on this mac with m with the m1 chip that costs only seven hundred dollars and don't forget that this system has only eight gigabytes of ram in a coming episode i'll be discussing why does that doesn't matter why i'm going to be explaining uh what is this new chip from apple how is it different than the old technology that we had and why is it much faster because a lot of people miss uh, understand this as simply a new faster computer however what's happening here is that apple just redesigned how we build processors the, the idea of a processor and the idea of adding gram and connecting uh, the system together uh, have been really changed by apple and i think for the best i hope that the whole industry will just uh, follow suit with this. It's worth noting that the uh, system crashed a couple of times. Now, until today, the system never crashed on me uh, throughout all the previous tests. However, uh, today the system uh, crashed uh, once when I was uh, testing Fusion. That's worth noting. Please remember that this is still in beta. So here you finally have it, the Fusion test on the uh, Mac with M1. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but wow. So, if you'd like to learn how to use Resolve, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com